Today, we're reviewing the Anchor Solix F3800. This is a solar generator. It's basically a battery box combined with an inverter set. We're using this type of generator, not as a backup unit, but as a primary storage unit in our tiny home or off-grid cabin. And the reality that we might be facing in coming decades is just less energy in general. So can we get away with space fans instead of heavy AC units? Instead of running a heater, which a heater would drain this thing very quickly, an electric heater. What about an electric blanket? You know, how long would that last us? So we're gonna be just testing multiple things today from the AC unit to the fan, then a space heater, and then an electric blanket and then power tools, just to show you all how much this can take, but also illustrate clever alternatives to use less energy to stretch your kilowatt hours as far as you possibly can. This is often used as a backup power source for an entire home. This has a battery capacity of 3,800 watt hours. So it's technically 3,840 watt hours. That's the capacity of the lithium batteries in this generator. It can produce up to 6,000 watts of power at once for your appliances. So this thing is a brick. It weighs over 130 pounds. Uh, it took Joe and I both to lift it out of the truck and get it here in the micro cabin safely. But it's heavy because it generates a walloping punch of power to either back up your full-sized home or to fully power your tiny home or your off-grid cabin. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today with the Anchor Solix F3800. Before we start connecting all the appliances in, I'm gonna give you all a tour of the exterior ports, inputs, displays on this Anchor Solix F3800. Um, you can hear some of the neighbors in the background, maybe they're, they're target practicing. This is the new off-grid location, it's more rural. It's very off-grid. Very off-grid. We're currently charging this off of one 300 watt solar panel. This is our handy dandy XT60 adapter. So this XT60 adapter goes to the MC4 connectors on the solar panels we have from Continuous Resources. This simply plugs in right here and you can actually plug in a second bank of panels. You can plug in up to 2400 watts of solar panels. We're only running 300 watts right now just to show this thing charging, but we plan in the future of connecting more solar panels to charge it faster. Battery expansion port. You can connect an expansion battery on top here. We're not using that currently, so we'll close that off. We've got the AC power adapter. This is the same type of adapter you might use for a display monitor or just a computer screen, computer display. This is how you can charge this at home if you're using it as a home backup solution. I know that there's more and more households on the West Coast using tools like this Anchor Solix F3800 during brownouts and blackouts. As the grid has more issues here in various parts of the US, these systems give continuity to your entire home. For us here in Georgia on the East Coast, the brownouts and blackouts are not that big of an issue yet, thankfully. Um, so we're using this more so for the off-grid cabin, for our tiny house, and then for just a backup power um, source during hurricane season. These will be massively handy in Florida during hurricane season for blackouts. The interface here is the home power port, which is used to connect to the home power panel. We're not using the battery expansion port, we're not using this, but we are charging with solar, which is pretty awesome. Let's take a look at the front of the Anchor. So the front of the Anchor Solix, we've got the car adapter. So for any appliances you've got that are using like a cigarette lighter adapter, we've got some GoSun solar ovens that we love to use that'll plug right in here that are low power and can allow us to cook using the GoSun solar oven powered by the Anchor Solix. To activate the power, you have to click the small button that's attached to whatever outputs. So this just gets the inverter up and running for this section of power. Display button here. We're gonna turn this on. We've got a 99% charge. Recharge time is 0.2 hours. When I unboxed this, it was at about 88% charge and it took about an hour and a half to get all the way up to 100. Now input, we've got 180 watts of solar power coming in from the 300 watt panel. It's getting later in the day here in Georgia, the sun's going down so we don't have full capacity, but 183 watts can have this fully charged at 100% in 0.2 hours. We've got USB-C ports and then USB ports here to directly plug in our phones and other um, small electronics. The on off button and then the reset button here. So the front display is pretty self-explanatory. And then down below we've got these wheels. These wheels can lock, which is a really handy feature just because this is such a heavy unit, you don't want it rolling around. All right, this is the side that matters the most to me. We've got 120 volt or 240 volt max. You could actually plug in 
a washing machine, a stove. You can plug in your biggest appliances directly into these larger ports up here. Now, most of what we'll be doing here in the micro cabin is gonna involve just our standard 120 volt wall sockets. There's overcharge protection breakers here. So if we need to, we can reset these. Most of what we'll be using though is just 120 volt AC appliances and then a few 12 volt DC ones that go in the carport. The battery pack is what's being charged by the solar panels and then the inverter is what gives us AC power. The battery and inverter are all in one. That's why these are commonly called solar generators. There's not much going on here in the back. Um, there's really nothing going on in the back. So. We'll wheel this back around. We've got this handle up here, Joe. This button releases the handle for, it's basically like to make it a dolly. I think that's pretty cool for moving it around. Because for most people, this will live in your garage. Or if you're not in a regular suburban home, your tiny house or micro cabin, or even your yurt. All right, so we're gonna flip this thing over. When you load this into the bed of a truck, or if you move this in the back of your car, this is the handle you always wanna use in addition to the handle here. And honestly, I'd recommend moving it with two people. You don't wanna throw your back out. I believe it's just over 130 pounds. So this bad boy's got some heft, but it does deliver when it comes to power. 6,000 watts of power delivered at once, AC, and then it's got 3.8 kilowatt hour capacity. All right, let's start plugging things in and put it to the real test now that we're done with the tour. The most important appliance here in the Southeast, in Georgia in particular, might just be air conditioning. Honestly, if you look at the numbers, not a whole lot of people lived in the South until after the 1960s. It was after the invention and the widespread adoption of air conditioning that the Sun Belt really boomed. So we're gonna start off by putting this to the test with an air conditioning unit for the micro cabin. Right now it's March and it's pleasantly cool outside, but you give it a few months and it is going to be a roasting oven here in Georgia. So if your power goes out and you don't have AC, that's gonna be one of the first things you wanna power up. So we're gonna connect a window AC unit, now a vent to the window. We'll connect that up to the anchor and let's see how many hours of use we get out of it. Pardon the mess in our cabin. We've moved it and we're still in construction mode, so the cabin's a bit of a mess, but that won't interfere with us testing the anchor solix. So I'm gonna plug this into the panel over here. We're just gonna plug that in and then we're gonna turn on the inverter. The AC unit beat. It's on. A little smattering of dust came out. <laughs> little dog hair. Lovely. Ooh, that's nice and cool. Even, even with it being mild outside, this does feel good. So we've got this set to 70 degrees. We're cooling. Let's see what the power draw is on the anchor. It's charged at 100%. Remaining charge 1.3 days. It's saying our output is 57 watts. We're gonna have to wait a minute. That, that should rise. Oh. oh, it was on fan mode. That now it's on AC. Oh yeah, 500. Okay, that's that's more like it. All right. See, I I knew we were off. I was like, that's a tenth of what it needs to be at the current rate of power draw with the AC unit at 562 watts. That would last us 5.6 hours, and that's about what I was hoping for. I knew it would. It, I was. I'd be shocked if the AC unit was going to power you know, run for a day or more. This thing is awesome for hours of backup, but I knew something was off. No AC unit only draws 60 watts. It's drawing 599 watts right now. So we're drawing 10% of what this thing can deliver watt-wise. So this can deliver 6,000 watts at once. So now we're gonna look at the poor man's alternative to air conditioning. We're gonna plug in a power splitter, turn off the air conditioning unit, and then fire up a fan which anyone in the South knows that's no substitute for AC. But if you wanna make your power stretch, a fan will get you a lot farther than running the AC for five hours. So we'll plug that in. That's running. We'll bring our space fan over here. This is just like a classic oscillating fan. I'm a big fan of this fan. Oh. Uh, I'm a dad, I can say jokes like that. Right, Joe? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Joe's a dad too, but his jokes are better. Look at that. Oscillating mode engaged. Okay, so oscillating fan. And now let me go turn off the AC unit. Bear in mind, the AC unit was drawing 600 watts of power and could be powered for about five, five and a half hours off the anchor solix. Now with just the space fan, we're drawing 43 watts. Now 47 watts. 
let's round it up to 50 watts. So this space fan is using one tenth or less the power of the AC unit. So for one AC unit, we could run 10 or 11 of these space fans. And honestly, if the humidity is not too bad, on plenty of days, if it's not a total roaster, the fan, that could work pretty well. The fan could be powered by the Anchor Solix for 1.3 days. Wow. 1.3 days. So does that give you an idea of how energy hungry air conditioning is? Yeah, that's huge. And Very hungry. And, and that's just on a full charge, but with all the solar panels we have out there, if those are charging this, then you know, six hours could last you through like a pretty warm night. Exactly, because that's the cool thing about solar. When it's hottest during the day is when the sun is beating down on your solar panels. So then you have the charge to get you on through the night. Yeah. Exactly. So you could keep cool for five to six hours running the AC for a micro cabin like ours with the Anchor Solix F3800 because it's drawing 600 watts of power. Or you could run this fan for 1.3 days. Granted, we're going to be pulling solar power in in real time. So those numbers will be longer as long as the sun is shining and we've got our solar panel array connected here. All right, we've been testing cooling. Let's test heating. Let's see what the draw is for an electric space heater. And now I know anyone that knows anything about solar power is screaming right now, you don't ever heat with solar energy. And it's true, you don't. It's not a best practice. This is just to illustrate the capabilities of this as an emergency backup system. Look behind me wood stove. That's how we do our heating in a common sense way. We want a high quality energy source like electricity for our laptops, our phones, our power tools, our chainsaw, our mower. We want this high quality electrical energy for those purposes. Heating, we're going to use biomass, wood for heating. We're going to use biogas for cooking whenever possible. So we use many different energy sources based on what type of energy it is. So for testing purposes only, we are going to connect an electric heater up to this just to see what the performance is. So you don't actually see any actual wattage coming in from the solar panel anymore. It's because it's already charged at 100%. The lithium batteries cannot overcharge. It's bad for them. So it cuts the charging after 100% is reached. It's verboten, but we're going to test the electric heater. Now, in an emergency situation, of course you could run an electric heater from a battery bank. It just draws so much power, it's just not advisable to do in a normal setting. But for testing purposes, here we go. Now, I've got a power um, extension splitter here, just to make it easier to plug in, because we're going to have a lot of things plugged into this anchor, so it looks by the end of the day. Um, so, let's plug in our heater, turn it on max. All right. This heater would heat up our little micro cabin very quickly. Um, it smells weird. It smells weird? Oh, this just a heater. It's smell. a very old heater. Like, it's, it's not a ceramic heater. It's not a new heater. Well, 1,434 watts. We could run this heater for 2.2 hours. If your power's out in like a hurricane or some blackout and it's frigid outside. So hypothetically, let's say that you're trying to keep yourself warm at night. You run a heater to warm the entire room but your whole room doesn't need to be warmed. Only you do. This is where we're trying to get clever with our off-grid living. Instead of powering an electric space heater from a battery bank charged by solar, hypothetically, if we're not using our wood stove, what if we just use an electric blanket? Let me go grab an electric blanket and let's see what the power draw of an electric blanket is because that would keep you warm enough in a cabin like this. It might not be quite as warm as the heater, obviously not in the entire room, but it'll keep your body warm. So let's run that test. I'll be right back. Okay, we've got the electric blanket. We used 1400 watts of power, 1.4 kilowatt hours on the heater. And the Anchor Solix could do, run that for 2.2 hours. Now let's say that it's a chilly night and I wanna be warm the entire night, not just 2.2 hours. I've got my electric blanket here. I just plug this in, low, medium, high. So we'll start with low, just for kicks. So on low, we're using 50 watts of power. 50 watts versus 1400 plus. So, I mean, 1400 watts of power. That's 1 28th the power. And it's already getting toasty in here. Like it's getting warm. Let's say it's a really cold night. You know, we're in the south. 
So we don't know what cold really is compared to you folks in Minnesota. Joe used to live in North Dakota, so Joe knows what cold is. It was awful. All right, medium, 37. Let's say medium's kind of still hanging around the same zone. Let's just go straight to high. Let's go straight to as warm as it gets in this blanket. Okay, doubled. Power output doubled. So one fourteenth the power needed for the space heater. And if you're in bed with other layers and you've got this all set up, you'll be warm enough to be comfortable. The fan pulled 50 watts. So the fan and the electric blanket, those are your frugal ways of stretching your battery bank if you're in a prolonged emergency situation or if you're just living off grid in a tiny cabin like this. Okay, so heater check, blanket check, AC unit check, fan check. Okay, we're gonna plug a leaf blower into the Anchor Solix F3800, just because I, I really don't know what type of wattage a leaf blower is gonna pull. I'm actually not gonna blow anything either because I just put straw down to grow grass and I don't wanna blow the straw away. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna move air. That's so bad, it's not <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was, admitting it wasn't funny was funny. So it's not interesting. He'll make the cut. <laughs> okay. okay, Joe. Oh wow, just plugged right into it. Yeah. I thought this was genius. Just because you don't want to like be having the socket come loose all the time. You see that? That loop? Genius. It seems so much more epic with it on. It does. Is there any emergency situation where you would want to use a leaf blower? If you're leafed in, you know how you get snowed in? If you're leafed in? Yeah. I bet people in Maine get leafed in. Yeah. New England, fall, do y'all get leafed in? <laughs> so this leaf blower, 840 watts or so, you could run this for 4.4 hours based on the full charge. So just, it's another appliance to show. Now, we're doing things one by one right now. Hang tight with us. We're gonna do a grand finale and power everything at once just to see how long the anchor solix f3800 could power if we're running our cabin you know full tilt if we're doing everything all the things because this is not a full-size house we can't show you a simulation of what it would look like to run multiple big appliances in a house in, a, in an emergency setting like a power down setting but uh here at the micro cabin we'll throw everything we've got at it just to see you know how long it lasts the sun's still shining right now, but let's say that we're in an emergency situation needing backup power at night. I've got a high power LED light here. We're gonna plug this in just to see what type of wattage is required to keep this going. Okay. It's bright, you ready? Yep. Oh, it's so bright, oh my gosh. <laughs> at night it's bright. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, I realize that, the sun is shining right into it, so. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's pulling 26 watts right now. Oh, I, I, can, I can see the difference now that's inside. This is pulling 22 watts. It's not even saying how, like this could keep running eternally because we're pulling in 127 watts of solar power. Joe. Sorry. So this would run infinitely as long as the sun is shining on the solar panel. We've got 120 watts to work with before we're at break even point. So to keep, so using this to keep your lights on, no problem at all. You can, get, they'll just run and run and run and run and run. Um, okay, so we've tested out the, uh, the light. All right, we don't have a full charge on that battery yet. Looks like it's leveling off around 500 watts to charge that battery for our chainsaw. Okay, so if you're using this backup power to charge other batteries for other hand tools, we've got about eight hours of charging chainsaw batteries, hedge trimmers, you know, drills, and that's important. I know it seems ironic to be using a lithium battery to charge more lithium batteries, but if you've got to power these tools in an off-grid setting or in an emergency setting, this is how you do it. We've got a GoSun cooler that's very energy efficient. Um, you can have a deep chest freezer that's also very energy efficient to keep food frozen and chilled if there's a power outage. 
But we're gonna plug in our Go Sun cooler just because that's what we have here with us and we're big fans of it, just to see what the power draw would be. Down to 32, so one half of the cooler is a freezer, the other half is just cooling. All right, output, 76 watts, 79 watts. Not bad, we can keep food cold and frozen. Granted, it's a smaller footprint than a regular fridge, but for our off-grid cabin, works great. 1,133 watts. So it's not as much power as the heater, but it's still a high power application. Heating, compressing air takes more power than almost any other appliance. Air conditioners need to compress air. An air compressor is literally that, it's compressing air. If there's a blackout or even a brownout, or you're living off grid, typically you're not gonna power one appliance at a time. We did that to show you all the power draw for each individual appliance. Some things take a surprising amount of energy, like an electric space heater. And some things are surprisingly efficient, like an electric blanket or a fan that you just have oscillating in your room. Now we're gonna plug in the fan, the air conditioning unit, the air compressor, the cooler, the lithium batteries. We might even plug in the heater just for kicks. Joe, should we plug in the heater? Let's do it. We're doing a dehumidifier and a lamp for good measure. With everything running, the Anchor Solids could keep going for 45 minutes and we're still not maxing out the 6,000 watt AC capacity. So we're running a oscillating fan, a space heater, AC unit, dehumidifier. We're running a cooler freezer combo. We're charging a lithium ion battery. I'm running an air compressor and we've got a leaf blower all going at the same time. And the Anchor Solix F3800 continues to chug. Here at the off-grid micro cabin, we would never power all of these things at once. But we didn't even break 4,000 watts of draw, and this can handle 6,000 watts of draw concurrently. This would easily power the off-grid micro cabin. Here, we would keep the cooler running all the time. We might run the AC unit periodically. We'd run the fan frequently, the electric blanket, the air compressor once in a while, the leaf blower or lithium ion batteries, for power tools once in a while, but we would never do them all at once. We would only use a fraction of this power for the off-grid micro cabin. For my own home or Joe's home, this would power our needs in a blackout for hours and hours. We'd only be running two or three appliances at once, but you can see it can do so many at once because of the inverter capacity and the battery storage capacity. I've been impressed with the product. We've still got to be testing for months on end to experience the full capabilities of a generator like this, but during the initial stress test, I'd say it did really well. Joe, what do you think? I'm impressed. We're impressed. Anchor Solix F3800. If you're in an area that's prone to blackouts or brownouts, or if you're going off grid, this is a solid option and we'd recommend it.